Eddie Trunk back with you to kick off the second hour of our weekly three-hour get-together. As usual, a very busy, action-packed show tonight. We just spoke with Biff Byford of Saxon for a bit. And now we welcome in our second interview of the evening, a guy that's been, uh, well, he hasn't been on our show in far too long, so it's good to correct that. We welcome in the leader of Man of War, Joey DeMaio. Joey. Hello, Joe. Hello, Eddie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thanks for the time. It's been a while. It's been too long. <laughs> it has been. Uh, I am glad that you're on the air with me now, and we have a few minutes, and I am extremely excited, like most fans, about an upcoming Man of War show finally on U.S. soil. I know you did one was it in Ohio not too long ago. We did two nights in Ohio, and we did uh, one night in Worcester, Mass. Okay, so there's been a couple, but obviously not nearly uh, as many as some of the U.S. fans would hope for, which we'll get into. But coming up November 19th, Starland Ballroom in Sayreville, New Jersey, and this will be the final one of the year, right? That's correct. We want to do uh, end the, the world tour on uh, home soil and in our hometown. So it feels great to be back, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Joey, the question is that, uh, and I put out on Twitter to people, hey, what is the biggest thing you want me to ask Joey? And it was almost a landslide uh, because this is not only a, a live radio show in New York, New Jersey, listened to, but uh, across the country, across the world, but from the American folks, you know, they want to know why Manowar is not active here in the U.S. as as much as other parts of the world. Is that just simply the, the size of the audiences and the demand, or are there other reasons? No, we're not ass-kissers, and, you know, you have to be an incredible ass-kisser normally to be commercially successful, and if that's uh, that's what people expect from Man of War, then they got to go find another band. I mean, it's like it's like asking why are some of your favorite movies not the most popular movies, you know, when you're dealing with art and purity uh, and people who will not fuck over their audience, then, you know, you're dealing with man of war when you're dealing with people that don't care about anything. They just want to play to thousands and thousands of people and make millions and millions of dollars. Well, then you become a suck ass, you know, and you just you lose your credibility. And that's not man of war. So by that, do you mean in dealing with many of the promoters here in America, that's where the issue lies? Joey, yeah, is is that is that where the issue lies? And when you say, uh, you know, s selling out and just doing what you have to do, in, in, that the the promoters and the venues here in America don't meet the criteria that you need to do a proper yeah, man of work I mean, performance. We're not going to kiss anybody's ass at a radio station, at a magazine, at a venue with a promoter with with anything that has to do with our music, and so therefore. We're playing for the fans. We're giving 100% to the fans. You know, our equipment is all custom built. You know, we bring in as much speakers as we possibly can. We bring in the best quality in the T-shirts, in the in the music, in the, the CDs, the DVDs. Everything we do is 100% under our control, and we give our fans the best. And if you look at the junk these other people put out, I mean, they're they're ripping the fans off, and it's just it's not what it's all about. So tell me about what you have planned for November 19th at Starland Ballroom, because there will be fans there, as you know, from not only the New York, New Jersey area, but people that are going to travel because Man War shows in America are fairly rare. What, what is, uh, you say, wrapping up the world tour? Tell us what you have planned for that show. Brutality. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to take the roof off that joint. I mean, that that's clear. And the guy who runs the place is a really, really smart and nice guy. The guy's name's Adam Weitzer, and we have to say thanks to him because he just basically said, look, I, you know, I really don't care. Come in and do whatever the fuck you want to do. I know that you guys are committed to your fans, and, uh, you know, we're not going to stand in your way. The place is yours. Do whatever you want to do. I said, well, you know, we're going to test the roof in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, he's just a really nice guy. And so it's a pleasure to work with people that just realize that it's all about the fans. And if there, there weren't any fans coming in that club, then there would be no reason for a club or no reason for Man of War or no reason for you or anybody else. And it's, it's really a pleasure to find people that care uh, about fans and will let a band like Man of War come in and do what we're going to do to that place. 
And Joey, and we're speaking live with Joey from Manowar. Uh, it's Eddie Trunk. Joey, the other thing tying in with the theme of the, the philosophy and the belief of Manowar is in the products that you've put out, whether they be CDs, whether they be T-shirts, whether they be DVDs, there is a quality to them. I mean, just some of the stuff I've been giving away over the last few weeks that you gave to me uh, here for the show. I mean, just the packaging on the CDs and stuff. You have taken, for people that don't know, you've taken the entire business of man of war under one roof correct you've you've done you you control everything now as opposed to going out to record labels and other folks to to do this stuff for you well you have to if, if our name is on it and we're expecting our fans to support it then it has to be something that we're proud of and it has to be under our control if it's not uh, then we don't have any idea what's going to end up in the store or what people are going to be charged for, and that's just that's just not going to happen with Man of War. Tell me about the decision to re-record, which I have right here, and I want to play something from it before I let you go in a little in a little bit. But uh, Battle Hymns, the classic Man of War album, has been re-recorded. You've uh, you've completely redone it in a new edition. Tell us about that decision and what you've attacked differently on it. Well. It was the first record we ever made, and every time you do something, you you want to look back on it and, and wonder how you can improve. And Donnie coming back into the band, you know, always said, "Boy, I'd love to have had another go," you know, with my drums and so forth. And so we just said, "Well, why not do it again?" And it's not like we're not proud of the original because we certainly are, and we didn't do it to do something better than what we did. We just wanted to see what it would sound like using today's technology. I mean, you're talking about quite a few years ago, and recording techniques have changed, and certainly we're under control you know, in many different ways where we haven't been before. So we were able to take our time, do it the way we wanted, using our own studio, and of course we've got what we consider the best equipment you know, that that you could possibly get. And that only means that the quality is going to be improved. So you're dealing with custom-made recording equipment, custom-made guitars, you know, speaker cabinets and so forth. And and this is what fans are paying for. When you come to see Man Award, you know, my guitar is custom-made. Our speaker cabinets are custom-made. We're playing through the highest quality stuff, and, and that's where the fans' money is going. And that's why we're so proud of everything we do. And when we decided to re-record this, we felt that we could achieve, you know, more sonic purity and a, a greater dynamic range. And if you listen to the record side by side, the original and this one, you can enjoy both for what they are. One is a classic recording, and one is a newer version of those songs. And and everybody that has heard it, you know, likes both. And I just hope that people will continue to enjoy both. Yeah, and that's an interesting and, and a pretty cool perspective on that, Joey, because a lot of the bands, it's become kind of a... A lot of bands have done this with their catalog, re-recorded uh, key records, debuts, whatever the case may be. And many of them, when they do that, they really kind of knock on the originals and talk about how the original wasn't ever what they wanted it to be and all that. I, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't love the original version of Battle Hymns, but I think your point is well taken that this is a different take on it you know, a few decades later, as opposed to, you know, it's subjective, which is better and which isn't. It's just a different time and, and recording process. And obviously the band is in a different place to revisit some of this really classic material. Well, this is what I'm, this is what I'm talking about, about being ass kissers. Why, if they weren't happy with the original recording, then why didn't they tell the record company to go screw off or the producer or the engineer? Why would people allow that? Right. You know, it's the same reason why you don't have six billion listeners. You're doing what you do. You're who you are, and you're happy with who you are. Could you have a bigger audience? Sure, you could. Would you have to pay the price and compromise? Sure, you would. Oh yeah. And so that's why people like you, myself, this guy that's got that club down there, this Adam, and the fans of heavy metal, true heavy metal, we've got to stick together. Well, because and and also the who we are, and also the common thread with the people that you're talking about is Man of War has been doing this for for decades. I, I've been doing this thirty years. It, it's the it's the uh, perseverance to it. You know, you've got the people that believe and respect for a certain quality of what you do and the way they're going to get it, and you have to be sure you deliver that in order to keep that going. And that's certain certainly something that's become a trademark, I think, for Man of War over the decades. 
Eddie, in Bulgaria, Turkey, Romania, we put 30,000, 40,000 people on the ground. Germany, you know, all these different countries. You go to Scandinavia, just about anywhere in Europe, you're going to see Man of War playing for anywhere from 15,000 to 40,000 people a night. And we could do the same thing here in America if we wanted to kiss people's ass and be on MTV. But if we were going to do that, we would have done that, you know, 20 years ago. But then we wouldn't be Man of War. And anybody I'd rather be man of war than anybody else. Right. And anybody that that even questions what you said about the amount of people in those places, all you've got to do is pick up the DVD series, uh, the Hell on Earth DVD series, because it's truly remarkable to watch that. Uh, they're so well done, and there's so much going on throughout those that series of DVDs. And you really get a sense for the incredible global love of man of war that's out there it's really really amazing well you're going to meet a bunch of them because everywhere we play there are people that fly in from all over the world and so there's going to be people from every country in the world there in, in jersey that's for sure i mean that's a guarantee and i know this for a fact because the last magic circle festivals the last three we sold the tickets through our website and we had people from four, 34 different countries amazing so you know it's a it's it's a pleasure to have loyalty and and respect uh, that we have you know from our fans all over the world and we wouldn't do anything um to disturb that i mean let's face it our fans are incredibly intense and it takes a thousand fans from any other band to make one man of war fan and it's not like i'm being arrogant i'm just telling the truth and if somebody doubts it just please come to this Jersey show and see it for yourself. And if you don't like it, hey, you never have to buy another ticket again. <laughs> it's that simple. Just check it out, and you'll get your fucking face melted. Joey, I want to I want to ask you about uh, your your singer and your your the man who's fronted Man of War since since the beginning, of course, Eric Adams. I he really truly is a freak of nature, and I mean that in the best of ways, in the most complimentary ways, because vocally. What this guy does and has done now for these decades fronting this band and, and how he delivers this stuff, I imagine it even has to amaze you after a while. Well, you know, he, he is a freak of nature in, in every respect because he's such a nice person in addition to being such a gifted gifted individual. I mean, he's just a, a wonderful human being. He's got a lot of heart. He's got a lot of soul. Uh, he's a caring person. And uh, so... Just as being, as far as a human being goes, he's truly a tribute, you know, to humanity. I don't, I don't say that just because he's in the band, but I mean, he really is a great person. Beyond that, he's a really, really gifted, gifted individual, and yeah, he has a, a, a tremendous gift in his voice. But he also has that voice today uh, because he takes care of his voice, and he is really, really concerned about putting on a quality performance and. You know, you hear most of these guys today that have been around, some of the metal bands, you know, some of the people that are still alive, and they can't sing. They're shot, they're burnt, they're toast. I mean, they couldn't even sing most of them, you know, when they started. But some of them had a few good years, you know, and there's a couple guys out there that can still, you know, sing somewhat. But we're very, very fortunate that he's a trained singer and knows how to use use his voice much like an opera singer. Because, you know, let's face it, these opera singers, they're belting, belting, belting for their whole career. And they, they retain their voices, you know, into their 80s. And if you know how to sing correctly and you're not singing from your throat, you know, you can do that. So, yeah, he's, he's considerate, man. He's really, really focused on what he's doing and so uh you know it's a pleasure to work with somebody like him that's a great point too because obviously you do see that with a lot of singers as they age and get in their late 50s start to lose certain parts of the range of their voice and uh, you know i never thought about that comparison because i always just said well that's just something that must come with age and impacts a singer but you're right i mean you look at the opera guys the Pavarotti's of the world whoever i mean those guys go don't lose anything as you said into their 80s so no i mean i've worked with carreras i mean you know recently in the last couple of years i mean and, and the maestro carreras is still i mean when he you know when he goes up into the higher register of his voice it's you know it gives you shivers down your spine 